Hey guys, this is Dan from LearningCameras.com and uh, here I've got the brand new Lightroom 5 Beta and we're going to walk you through some of the new features on this. Now, one of the most important ones on this is going to be actually in the import dialog. For those of you who might be importing from a hard drive uh, and want to keep the files on the hard drive, this will be especially big to you. When you import, you can actually build these smart previews here when you import and what that does is it creates a DNG file at 2500 pixels and that is what Lightroom is using right now because my hard drive is actually disconnected and so these files are offline and so what we see here is this little black box letting us know we're in offline mode now this means that if I zoom in I can't get nearly as far these are 5700 pixels on the width but I'm only able to zoom in to what would be the equivalent of 2500 however I am still able to make all my adjustments on this as if it was an actual file and then uh, if I go and make some adjustments on this real quick and we'll, uh, we'll do that real quick and so here's my adjusted file now I'm gonna go ahead and plug back in my hard drive and when we do that these files are going to come back online in a little bit and my hard drive has just come back on and there we have that the black box disappeared right there and so that means that I am no longer in offline mode and so now when I zoom in I'm actually able to zoom in into the full original pixel size and now when we go to develop we can notice that all my editing is still there so I can actually completely edit all of the files in offline mode as long as I'm okay editing on 2500 pixels and then it will um, modify that to go with the full resolution files when my hard drive is plugged back in so great feature on that and um, another one is going to be the a brush that we used to use, actually not that one, uh, I'm going to use the brush that we used to use to get rid of objects. Now originally some of these files, um, like I'm going to zoom in on this, this would have been a very hard thing to get rid of before. I would have probably taken this into Photoshop because it would have drawn a circle and then if I were to expand my brush size say to here it would have just looked for another circle area right here and it was going to be a little more difficult to get rid of something of that shape. Now what's new with this brush is now when I click on this brush, let me go ahead and delete that one, rather than creating this big large circle, I can actually shrink that and then just paint on the area that I'd like to get rid of, just like we would in Photoshop, and then that area now is going to uh, be overrun with another area, and I can still choose that area, and it does an okay job, um, Photoshop is still a little bit better at this, but I can still choose my area of where it's going to pick that from, and that area will now disappear. And so here's another area right here where I can just take and brush brush in that area right there and it'll get rid of that part. So overall much improved. Um, I can take a bunch of less files into Photoshop to get rid of that. And now another big thing that I love with this is going to be right in, uh, right in here. And this is going to be our radial filter. And what I love is on pictures like this where my focus point is going to be around them. I'd love to be able to create this filter that's going to just be around them. And so what I can do is drag a filter and put it over them. And now all my modifications now, if I wanted to do increase the exposure, are going to be overall but not on that area. So basically I can make overall adjustments on this image and I can affect only that outside area and not on the inside. We can also invert the mask to reverse the area. But basically, very quickly, I can make all of these adjustments to the outside and not affect them at all. So they are still going to be uh, normal, just like I had the picture before, but all of these other global adjustments have happened to the outside extremely quick. I would have had to paint that in. It wouldn't have been an even circle. One of the best features on this, and I'm very happy to see that. Now, another thing on this uh, is we can see here that my columns are off. So I was shooting this with a 24 millimeter lens. And so normally when I came into here, into my uh, lens correction, I could do the normal enable profile correction. You can see that this helped a whole lot. It took off the vignetting, it straightened the picture. But if we look here at the very bit of the corner, we can see that my uh, frame right here, also I can remove this chromatic abrasion and that disappeared right there. So I had a little bit of chromatic abrasion on the side of that and it disappeared. But this column is still not quite even. It gets from small here up into the top there. Well now we can hit this auto realign and it's going to go ahead and analyze that image and you can see that it straightened it. 
and it does a very good job of getting in there and we can even reanalyze the image if we want to and uh, sometimes it lets you and so let me turn that off and then turn it back on again and you can see that that column right there straightened right up and that was a big feature on that and uh, let me pull in this one too and if I take this into the develop module I can apply the normal profile correction and you can see that that did a great job but taking a look at some of these lines here we can see that they're still not straight and so this is something we could do now in Photoshop CS6 but I couldn't do in Lightroom now when I click on auto it's gonna go ahead and realign those and so now I can see that my lines here are actually very straight and that completely fixed my issue also my columns on this side are now completely straight and let me remove that real quick and you can see that my columns oops, uh, my columns on this side are not at all straight on that so it really fixed that issue right up so there have been a couple other new features uh, mostly to the slideshow now in the slideshow I can actually add video to my slideshow as well as photos so that'll help out a lot of people that are using this for presentation purposes also there are some new features in the book module if you do use that to create any of your books so overall a huge improvement uh, those features alone will save me a ton of time, especially being able to work off of a hard drive in offline mode so I can take my photos around with me now as I travel around with my laptop and know that they're fine on my hard drive. And if I ever do need to make some adjustments on there, I can make those. And I can also still deliver those images right to a client. And uh, as long as they're good with 2,500 pixels, I could deliver them right to a client on the spot if I needed to or export them as a JPEG file. And then having those realigned features, that's going to save me a huge trip into Photoshop. And also, man, I can't get over uh, how good that radial filter is. So that is a huge asset to have there, just to be able to click on this radio filter, or radial filter and make a global adjustment to an area very, very quickly uh, just by clicking on it. And we can always change the size of the area and we can invert the mask. And we can make as many of these as we want on top of it. So I could literally make one for each of these windows if I wanted to. And we can edit this to be just about the same size as that window. Very nice feature on that. And uh, looking forward to using Lightroom 5. I can't wait till it comes out. So huge time saving tools and it'll definitely help you out quite a bit. If you don't have Photoshop CS6, this is going to be a must have. If you do use Photoshop CS6, this is just going to save you from having to go into Photoshop just about every time you edit a photo. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Feel free to ask me any questions and I will look forward to when this software comes out.